Today we come to the third and fourth trumpet of Revelation chapter 8. The third angel sounds his trumpet, and we see a star blazing like a torch falling from the sky into the rivers, springs, and waters. The fourth trumpet is sounded, and we see that a third of the sun is struck, a third of the moon, a third of the stars become dark. Let's talk about that today in the Word. Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Today in the Word. Hi, I'm Glenn Schaefer, and I trust that as you follow along with us here in the book of Revelation, it is being meaningful to you. Would you do me a favor and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you've just stumbled along or been given it by a friend? If you're following us on our podcast, I want to welcome all of you who are listening in. Today, we're going to address the rest of chapter 8 in the book of Revelation, dealing with the third and the fourth trumpets. Now, the third trumpet sounds, and there's a great star that falls from heaven called Wormwood into the waters. It references rivers and springs and water. So let's read this verse, verse 10, 11, and let's get into it. It says, The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers, on the springs of the water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. Now, as we have said, to understand the book of Revelation, we need to interpret it in light of the Bible. I find it interesting that the book of Revelation is at the end of our canon. That's good because we need to know the rest of the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, to be able to understand because we see preceding symbols that help us understand as we combine these biblical imageries in walking through. We've already seen then the destruction or the overtaking of powers in Egypt and Babylon is clearly given as examples here. Even in the plague against Egypt in Exodus chapter 7, where the waters turned bitter from the multitudes of dying and dead fish, here the bitterness comes from a star that falls from heaven onto the waters, and it turns those waters bitter. Now, we've already seen that stars in the Bible represent authorities and powers like the sun and the moon, and it's interesting that we see Babylon literally called a morning star as authority because Nebuchadnezzar was of the golden image of that image that Daniel interpreted, that he had the king had had a vision, a dream, and Daniel's interpreting, and he says it's golden because it's superior of all the nations. Now, we know Jesus is the true morning star. In fact, it's prophesied that there'd be a star that would come out of David. That's why they were looking for the star of David. And Jesus is known as the morning star. But here in Isaiah 14, Babylon is called a star or morning star as it falls. Now, normally when we look at Isaiah 14, we interpret it in light of Satan because the word Lucifer is used there. And maybe there is double imagery, and I could see that as he falls into the pit. But verse 4 of Isaiah 14 tells us in the contextual authority, this is a prophecy against Babylon. Let's read it. How you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, son of the dawn. You have been cut down to the earth, and you have weakened the nations. Let me stop there for just a moment. Notice how this star, which is a nation called a star, has been cast down, it says, and from heaven, <laughs> and consequently, that star falling has affected the nations around that. Now, you see that in these trumpets that's being sounded, that what happens to the mountain, which is an example of that in the earlier trumpet, which was the second trumpet, 
was a blazing a mountain and it fell into the waters and it affected the waters around them because that old mountain was also a picture of Israel being cast down in judgment. Now we see a star that's blazing like a torch. Where the mountain was blazing, this torch is blazing, meaning it's coming to an end. It's on fire. And this analogy we see, obviously letting the Bible interpret the Bible, that when you see a star falling from heaven, it is a nation falling. It is authority falling. Just in Isaiah 14, where it said of Babylon, you morning star, you've been cast down and you weaken the nations around it. Let's keep reading. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven and I will raise my throne above the stars of God and I will sit on the mount of assembly in the recesses of the north and I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will make myself like the most high. Nevertheless, you will be thrust down to Sheol to the recesses of the pit. As he tried to exalt himself above the stars, he was cast down. So was Israel who had be, been God's morning star, so to speak, now in their apostasy had actually brought destruction. It's a double imagery. One is a mountain cast into the sea, and now a star that's blazing as well makes the waters bitter. What, what are we saying? Well, Israel's apostasy has affected the nations around it when the opposite was supposed to happen. Israel was to be a light to the Gentiles. Well, Israel is a light to the Gentiles by the remnant of those, like Paul in those early day Christians, the first 10 years of Christianity, so to speak, of the church, were Jews. And they were a light to the Gentiles. And they have become the fulfillment of that. But natural Israel, apostate Israel, became an empty sepulcher. It became a place of death, a house of desolation. And that was serious. And we see the judgments here where they should have been a light to the Gentiles. That particular group was not. And therefore, they become wormwood or bitterness misleading the nations around them. So God uses this term of bitter water and poisonous water, wormwood. It's not a term we would normally use, but he uses it to show a root of bitterness when people turn away from him. Now Israel has turned away from him and gone into a root of bitterness. Deuteronomy 29 and 18 explains this. It says, so that there may not be among you man or woman or family or tribe. Listen to this whose heart turns away today from the Lord our God to go serve the gods of these nations, that there may not be among you a root-bearing bitterness or wormwood. It's called a parallelism. He explains to us that the heart's turning away from God is a root of bitterness or wormwood or poisonous drink of water. So Israel, that star called Wormwood, was bitterness. It defiled the nations around it. By rejecting Christ the Messiah, they were to be a light, and now they've become bitterness. God says this in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 15, using the same term when he says, See, I will feed this people Wormwood and give bitter water to drink. It's a pronouncement of judgment. When you turn from the living water, which Christ is, to bitter waters, and that's what we see around us today when people who are without Christ thirsting for that which satisfies. You remember Jesus said, if any man thirsts, let him come after me and out of their innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. He said to the woman at the well, the water I give you, you'll never thirst again. You see, that's clear, pure water of life, the river of life. The opposite of that is wormwood or bitterness. You'll see that in Jeremiah chapter 23. He says the same thing. Because the prophets, because of the prophets, ungodliness has spread throughout the land, and he will feed them wormwood. So Israel now has become bitterness to the nations, or wormwood, if you please. That is the trumpet that the third angel sounded. 
Now the fourth angel says, verse 12, the fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. Verse 13, as I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in the midair call out in a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. Wow. As a third of the seas and the nations were affected by the earlier trumpet of the falling of the blazing star, now we see this fourth trumpet or the fourth angel sounding to say that the authorities, the sun, the moon, and the stars, of those nations around them said a third of them were affected, both night and day. So it was a complete in that area, but not complete destruction of all the authorities, only a portion of them using the idea of a third. So the idea of the authorities of Israel and the nations around them being affected. This is used, as we've said, by the prophets depicting the falling of powers and authorities. We've often referenced to Isaiah 13 because, because it's such a clear picture of when Babylon is being taken over by the Medo-Persians and in that passage it clearly says that the stars fall from heaven and the sun and the moon don't give their light. It was the imagery saying once again to Babylon, your authority is finished, it's over. Well, now Israel, you're going to see, is called Babylon. Israel is called Egypt. Israel is called Sodom. And that great city has now become the city of judgment, just as they have watched God's judgments in times past. Now it's coming against them. You'll see that not only in Isaiah 13, but you'll see that in Isaiah 34, when Babylon takes over Egypt. And we could give you many other references as well, even when Jesus in Matthew 24 used those same terms of stars falling from heaven. Now, David Chilton, in his book, Days of Vengeance, he quotes from F.W. Farrar, who was a 19th century author, and his book called The Early Days of Christianity. Here's what he says about that particular judgment of those darkened powers. He says, ruler after ruler, chieftain after chieftain of the Roman Empire and of the Jewish nation was assassinated and ruined. He's talking about when this prophecy is being fulfilled and declared here in the book of Revelation. He says, Gaius, Claudius, Nero, Galba, Otho, Vatilus, and all died by murder or suicide. Herod the Great, Herod Antipas, Herod Agrippa, and most of the Herodian princes, together with not a few of the leading high priests of Jerusalem, perished in disgrace or in exile or by violent hands. All these were quenched suns and darkened stars. That's why the idea a third was struck. Not all of them, but a portion of them were quenched. This depicts this upheaval time of the nation as Israel was falling, so around it were the nations being affected. The eagle flying is pronouncing more serious judgments. We see now these first four being finished, but the next three are going to even be more serious. The idea that these trumpets are going to be more grievous comes from the idea that the angel flying, or excuse me, the eagle flying in midair declares, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. When you see that three times mentioned, that is strong emphasis, woe, woe, woe. Now the inhabitants of the land, or I should say, can be translated as land because the Greek word is gay, G-E, and it's often used to refer to the land of Israel. For example, in Matthew 2.20, it speaks of the land of Israel. So these three trumpets that are about to sound are bringing greater woes. 
what we're going to see as we walk through our study is it even gets more grievous. Thank you for joining me today.